Thunderbolt docks allow you to plug one cable in your computer and provide data, power, connect your screens, as well as additional USB devices. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the new Kensington SD7100 T5 Thunderbolt 5 dock. This has a ton of great ports on it, an integrated SSD slot, and a couple of other features that are really handy to have. I've also got a couple of things I don't like about this dock. So in this video, I'm gonna show you everything I think is great about this and a few things that may be deal breakers for you. Before we go any further, I do wanna say thank you to Kensington for sending me this dock to test out. They've got no input in this content, just based on my thoughts after using this for a while, who I think it's for and who I think should go for a different option instead. Let's take a look at all the ports you get with this. On the front of the dock, you get two USB-C ports, two USB-A ports, an SD card slot, a micro SD slot, and a CF card slot, as well as a headset jack on the front too. There's also indicator lights on the front to show you the dock is powered off or on. And you also have two buttons on the top of it with indicator lights as well. And we'll talk about those buttons in a second. One of my favorite features about this is the fact that there's a Thunderbolt 5 port on the front of the dock, which is awesome if you wanna plug fast external SSDs into this because you don't have to reach around to the back side of the dock to do this. And then on the back of the dock, there's an additional speaker out, a microphone in, an optical out for plugging this into other audio equipment, which is pretty sick that they have this. There's also a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port, an additional two USB-A ports, all at 10 gigabits a second. And there's the host Thunderbolt 5 port for plugging this into your computer and an additional two Thunderbolt 5 ports. You also got a power button and there's the DC power in. On the top of the dock, you've got a do not disturb button and also a photo backup button. You can also download Kensington software if you wanna reconfigure what these buttons do. Like I didn't really find the photo backup button to be that handy, but I did like the do not disturb button on the top of it. And then on the side of the dock, there's two Kensington lock slots, which is cool because it actually locks the lid on too. One of the best features of this dock is the fact that you can put your own NVMe SSD in. And to do this, you do have to remove a screw from the side, which I found to be a little annoying to do, but take the screw out and then you pull the top of the dock off. And then there's another slot that you have to pop off. This is cool because it's got the thermal pad on the bottom of this metal, as well as an additional thermal pad that goes beneath your SSD. And then remove the screw stopper and slide it onto the SSD. Next, you want to insert the SSD at an angle press it down and line it up with the screw hole, and then you just tighten the screw to hold the SSD in place. Once you get this installed, all you gotta do is actually just pop the cover back on, snaps into place, and lower the top cover of the dock on as well. This does give you really fast SSD speeds, and I was hitting between 4,500 to 5,300 megabytes a second on the read and write with this with tons of stuff plugged in. So I was using my studio display, I was using another external display, and I had all the USB-A ports filled up as well as the network port on the back. So that's really fast to get those kind of speeds out of the dock just from one cable plugged directly into your computer. The host port on this plugs your computer into the dock, allows you to use all the ports on it, and you get up to 140 watts of power reserved for your laptop. So even with the 14 or 16 inch MacBook Pro, this will have no problem with keeping it powered and running all day long. The whole dock is made of metal. It feels really durable, but it definitely gets pretty warm when you use it. In the box, you do also get the big power supply that you have to have it plugged into. And it also includes a Thunderbolt 5 to Thunderbolt 5 cable in the box. And I feel like this is the perfect length for use with this. One of the things I really appreciate with this dock is the fact that you actually get some USB-C ports on the front of it. There's 30 watts of power reserved for one of the USB-C ports. So this will be great if you wanna charge an iPad from this or if you have power hungry devices. And then the additional USB-C port on the front does give you seven and a half watts of power. Every single Thunderbolt 5 port on this provides 15 watts of power for any device you plug into, except the host port, of course, provides the 140 watts of power for a computer. The USB-A ports give up to four and a half watts of power. I think the biggest mistake with this dock is the fact that they put so many USB ports on the front of it. I would have loved to see one of the USB-A ports on the back of it and one of the USB-C ports move to the back of it because you really don't need five ports on the front of it. Having the Thunderbolt 5 port on the front is amazing. I also love the 30 watt port for fast charging things, but I don't think they needed to have both the USB-A ports and that additional C on the front. I had to run cables around to the front of the dock so I could keep my Stream Deck plugged in and all my different audio interfaces. And to me, it just would be a cleaner look if you had a couple more of those USB-A and USB-C ports on the back of it, especially since this dock is really designed to have so many ports. Another thing I didn't really like about this is I think that the network port should have been a 10 gigabit port for keeping it connected to fast servers. This is a higher end docking station and it would be sad to have to use a different adapter if you wanted to get 10 gig because you'd be plugging it into one of your Thunderbolt ports while then not using the ethernet port on the back. And to me, that's not the point of a docking station. So I think with the premium price and branding on this dock, it definitely deserved to have a 10 gigabit second port. The SD7100 T5 does come in at $450 and you get a three year warranty with it. I feel like the price on it is 
pretty fair because this is definitely a premium docking station with more ports than the average one. And there's also some really cool ports that may be super useful for you, like the optical jack on it. You get that SSD slot on the top of this that works great. Had no issues even editing videos off of it. I'll have links for some of my favorite SSDs you could put in this dock in the description below. Really, the only things I don't like about this is the fact that it doesn't have the 10 gig port, which I think should be included with any dock over the $400 price range. And I also think a couple more of those ports from the front should have been moved to the back so you could have a cleaner desktop setup. I could see people saying, well, if you want to plug external flash drives and enclosures to the front, then it's nice to have multiple ports. But I think with this docking station, it just would have made sense to have a couple less ports on the front because you could still have three ports on the front and just moving those two to the back would have made a big difference. One other thing that may or may not bother you is there's no HDMI or display port on this. For me, it was fine because I use a Thunderbolt display and my vertical monitor, I just plugged into the other Thunderbolt port on the back of it. That works just fine, but I could definitely see a world where having an additional display port or HDMI port on the back of this would be pretty nice as well. Because if you have HDMI, you are going to have to use some adapter cable or potentially a dongle on the back of this. So to tie it all together, I think the Kensington ST7100 T5 is a great option. If you need lots of ports, if you want that really handy Thunderbolt port on the front of it, as well as plenty of power for your laptop and to keep all your devices plugged in. It's also so handy to have fast built-in storage with this that you can access anytime you plug your computer into the stocking station. Overall, highly recommend the Kensington ST7100 T5. If you're interested in picking the stocking station up, I'll have links to buy in the description below. If you got any other questions, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Like this video, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any upcoming content.